This is the second video in a two-part sequence related to binary logistic regression in MATLAB. In the previous video, we downloaded, cleaned, and explored some data related to vehicle purchasing decisions based on demographics. In this video, we'll use MATLAB to perform binary logistic regression. Please note that you'll need the statistics and machine learning toolbox to run this code. The first thing we need to do is to split the data into a training set and a testing set. You might also hear the testing set referred to as a holdout set. The training set will be used to calibrate the model, whereas the testing or holdout set will be used to evaluate the model's performance. The CV partition function randomly splits the data into a training and testing set. In particular, the 0.3 here means that 30% of the data will be reserved for the testing set and the remaining 70% will be used to train the model. The training function returns a logical array indicating whether each element in the overall data set is part of the training data. Similarly, the test function returns a logical array indicating whether each element in the overall data set is part of the testing data. We see that this dummy variable returns a 1000 by 1 logical vector. It's 1000 elements long because our data set has 1000 rows. The first four elements of this logical vector are 1, which means that the first four elements of the data set are used for the training set. The fifth element is a 0, so the fifth row of the data set is instead used for the testing set. The training and test functions return opposite results, so if the training function returns a 1 for our particular element, the test function will return a 0 for that same element. The data train and data test variables extract the pertinent rows from the overall data set. Data train has 700 rows and data test has 300 rows, which makes sense because we told MATLAB to randomly divide 30% of the data into the testing set. Now we can build our binary logistic regression model. We pass the training data into the fitGLM function and also supply this name value pair to tell MATLAB that the response variable, aka the purchase decision variable, is binomial in nature and thus we should perform binary logistic regression. The model's form is printed to the command window. We can see that the p-value for the gender category is greater than 0.05, so it is statistically insignificant in our model. This is consistent with what we observed in the previous video during our exploratory data analysis. Because it's statistically insignificant, we can exclude it from the model using the remove terms function. As the name implies, the remove terms function discards the gender variable from our model. Now, the model only consists of an intercept and two coefficients representing the age and annual salary. We can see that the model's coefficients are given in logit form. For instance, the log odds of someone buying a vehicle rises by about 0.211 for a one-year increase in their age. Log odds are somewhat unintuitive, so we can convert the coefficients from log odds into odds ratios. I used dot notation to access the model's coefficients within the MDL variable, then stored them in the COFS variable. Then I converted the coefficients from log odds to an odds ratio by exponentiating them. 
the 0, 0.000 down here corresponds to the odds ratio of the intercept. In the context of our model, this can be interpreted as the odds of someone buying a car at age zero with no salary is essentially zero, which is to be expected. Similarly, the 1.03 odds ratio corresponds to the salary variable, so a one unit increase in someone's annual salary increases the odds of buying a car by a factor of 1.03. Note that for the annual salary, a one unit increase really means a $1,000 increase in their salary, not a $1 increase. This is because we divided the salary data by $1,000 in the last video. Now that we've built and trained the model, we need to test it using the testing or holdout data. The predict function inputs the testing data into our model and returns the predicted probabilities of someone buying a car given their age and salary. Technically, we also pass their gender into the model, but because the model no longer accounts for the gender, it actually doesn't do anything. We see that the purchase predict variable has 300 rows, which is uncoincidentally the same length as the testing data set. The entries within the purchase predict vector are probabilities. For example, the point 0.1553 means that a male who is 40 years old and has an annual salary of $43,500 has a 15.53% chance of purchasing a car according to the model. We can see that this particular user actually did not purchase a car. Now that we've built the model, we need to evaluate its performance. We can do so by constructing a confusion matrix. But first, we need to slightly modify this purchase predict vector. We would like the predicted purchases to be dichotomous in nature, aka either a zero or a one, similar to the purchased variable in the original data. What we can do is round these predicted probabilities so that the vector only contains zeros and ones. After rounding the purchase predict variable, I extracted the last column of the testing data. This represents the actual purchasing decisions of the participants in the testing data set. Then, I pass these two quantities into the confusion map function to build a confusion matrix and cleaned up the annotations of the confusion matrix. We can see that of the 300 predictions our model made, it correctly predicted that 160 folks did not buy vehicles and about 100 folks bought vehicles. The upper right quadrant represents the number of people that our model predicted to buy vehicles, but did not in actuality. The bottom left quadrant represents the number of people that our model predicted to not buy a car, but actually did. Note that your numbers may differ from mine, as the testing and training sets are randomly generated every time you run the code. However, your results should be in the same ballpark as mine. We can compute the overall accuracy of our model by summing the entries along the main diagonal of the confusion matrix and dividing this quantity by the total entries in our confusion matrix. The model has an accuracy of about 81%, which is pretty good. Once again, you'll get a slightly different confusion matrix and accuracy when you rerun the code because of the randomly generated testing and training data. This concludes the two-part demo on implementing binary logistic regression in MATLAB. To summarize, we imported, pre-processed, and explored some data that had a binary response variable. Then, we split the data into a training and testing set. Afterwards, we applied a binary logistic regression model to the training data and evaluated its performance using the testing data and the actual purchase decision data. With some trepidation, this model can be used to predict the purchase decision based on age and annual salary without considering the prospective purchaser's gender. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you next time.